everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to paint a little portrait study and I'm going to start with acrylics and then I will be painting with oils to finish this portrait. So let's begin. So this portrait is actually part of the larger painting but it's totally suitable to just paint a crop of it. Now to make things a bit easier for me, I actually wanted to show you my reference photo. So this is my reference. You see like there are lots of soft transitions. This is very difficult to paint with acrylics. But I made a little adjustment to this and I made a posterized version of this reference. So this is just a Photoshop filter that I put over it. And you can see that the different colors are broken into individual like simplified shapes. So the first thing I'm going to do is laying a few foundation colors here around the hair and since she has such a beautiful silver hair of course i'm using silver metallic paint so let's do that first a little bit of the flow improver a bit of metalda i don't use any water because i want to keep these very distinct brush strokes if i would use water the brush strokes will flow into each other, creating an even application of paint, which is good if you want to go for that, but I would like to have really beautiful, distinct brush strokes and abstractions as well. So first I just lay down a foundation here. I think I'm just going to directly start with the detail brush here. This is actually a watercolor brush. So I'm using all my brushes, uh, pretty much random, whatever works, I will just use it. And I will carefully just draw in the lash line here. Okay, so I'm switching to another brush. Um, let's see if this brush is good or maybe like a medium brush, because I want to stay with the same color. The shadow under her chin actually is almost the same color, but it's not that saturated. So I'm going to mix it with a bit of blue, a bit of white, a bit of yellow ochre, like this, maybe a bit of the magenta tone too. It's good, but it might be a bit too, too transparent. I used yellow ochre. Again, a bit of white, a bit of magenta, a bit of sienna. The more white you use and some of the other colors are opaque as well, the less transparent it gets. But acrylic is always a bit transparent. So here I'm just filling out the colors. It doesn't need to look good right now. And we can refine later. So just don't get shocked that it looks so bad right now. Just trust the process. This looks like the right value. This is better. However, it's super transparent and it is not covering very well. And the rest is still very sticky. So for the eyes, I just start with the gray tone. I'm just going to mix a bit of black and blue and brown. So we have a warm gray tone. using this transparent brown to do some transitions. It's the same like with watercolors where you use transparent layers to add a few transitions. You can do this with acrylics too, but it works just with darker colors. Like with white, it's, it's very difficult, but with darker colors, it works pretty good. Now where I have this color on my brush, I will just go and see where I can use it on the portrait. For example, here on her decollete, you can just make some abstract brush strokes because I'm not painting this today. This is just part of the big painting, but today we're just going to focus on the portrait section. So 
I'm getting a bit, bit harder to make it a bit transparent. Now I'm squinting my eyes. And I will just go back to the smaller brush. Now we can work more in the details. So this obviously is way too harsh, the contrast there. And as you will see during the process, while you refine the other color values, you will see, oh, this is just way too dark or too light. And then you can refine and smooth out all the mistakes. So this is actually a bit sticky, so this didn't hold to it. So I actually would have to use a hairdryer now. But I think I will just continue on other areas because I'm just too lazy right now. So let's paint the lips. The upper lip needs to be darker. Bit of ultramarine blue, bit of red. Unfortunately, these colors are all transparent which means I have to use even more layers. So now it really comes together and you can start going over some of the contours again. You see how nice this just, oh, it looks so beautiful, the eye. So I'm just going over the contours of the eyelid folds here with a reddish brown tone. I think this is really good for the acrylic layer. Now let's continue with the oil painting process. My oil painting palette is almost the same as my acrylic palette. I have almost the same colors. Few exceptions is Prussian blue and olive green. And I also have cadmium red light, which is just an orange tone. Of course, I have different mediums. I work with liquid original from Wins and Newton and green for oils from Sennelier, which is a brush cleaner. It's odorless and non-toxic. I like to start with the eyes. First, they're like the most important part of the portrait. And second, currently they bother me the most. <laughs> so let's start with them. I'm going to mix a color for the eyeballs. Again, here I'm just using my watercolor brush because it, it has the right uh, size and it's a detail brush. It's not good for your brushes, I admit that. But I don't really care. Watercolor brushes are not that expensive. And often I have a few cheap brushes that I use for these purposes <laughs> that I can throw away if I need to. So you see here the gray is immediately more opaque than it would be with acrylics. And the good thing is since we have laid on such a nice layer with the acrylic paint, we can just only fill out and color in what we painted previously. Don't need to think that much anymore. Can just correct it and smooth it out. Of course, we need to mix the same colors again, but it's so much better than having to wait for the oil paints to dry because the acrylic is already dried. Like I'm painting it just at the same day or painting everything with acrylics, which is such a struggle really because it doesn't create nice transitions. So this way we get the best of both worlds. It's my absolute favorite technique right now. Now we have this blue tone for the darker tones on my brush. I will just go ahead and paint it everywhere where I can find it on the reference. This is an older brush. I can spread out the color a bit more softer. This is why I don't throw away brushes if they're not that fine anymore because you can reuse them for other purposes. Now I mix the lightest skin tone here. I'm just adding white to the skin tone colors that I have already on my palette. And maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. While I apply the paint, I squint my eyes to see if I apply it right and on the right region here. It's easy to get lost and 
forget the proportions. Now I pick up this bigger brush here because it can hold more paint. And I use a bit of the medium, a bit of yellow. Oh, it looks so nice already. Really happy with it. A bit of blue to get the gray bluish tone from the edges of the face. Oh, this was too much. You see how I changed the angle of my brush to create shapes and to create blendings. This way it looks natural and you have nice brush strokes. This area needs to be a bit orange. Then we have some issues with the eyebrows. And I'm just discovering all these little mistakes by looking on the side-by-side -side comparison. And now smoothing out areas, they look strange. I think there's still the acrylic layer underneath. There's not much paint on this area. Okay, so the face is finished and I think it's really pretty. And today I'm going to paint the hair. And I'm switching back to acrylics because it's a bit easier. I can layer more um, paint on top without waiting for drying times. So let's start. So I'm going to start with this medium sized brush. And I'm also working again with the posterized version of the reference again. I'm mixing a tone for the mid-tones, like the darkest parts of the hair. Not the, like the blacks, but the darkest mid-tones. Oh, you see I painted a little bit over the lines here. So I'm quickly grabbing a brush, a bit of the flow improver, and just very carefully wipe it away. So that's not a big deal, really. I'm just following the shapes that I can see on the reference. They go with the direction of the hair. You see with the flat brush you can create really beautiful hair strands. Forgot the part here on the top, the most important part. Now we have lots of lots of little hair strands, just a bit difficult to paint. I will start here with the top and with a big brush. You would think you need a very small brush for small hair strands, but bigger brushes are actually better. because you can create many small hair strands at once. On the crown of the head, you might think it's easy, but it's actually really important that you get the color values right. And I'm just looking back and forth to the reference to see in which direction the hair flows so that it looks really natural. And I try to avoid really strong contrast here. I like to carefully build up to the very subtle transition from the light of the silver to the darks of the silver. 